on air, online, and squeezed into your smartphone. So when you are FM 103.7, time to have a look at some of the things that are, or in this case, hypothetically will be happening in the world of education. Of course, uh, if you've been uh, anywhere other than uh, planet Earth for the last little bit, you know that there's a new state government sweeping into town, and that will probably mean a whole lot of changes. What would that mean uh, in uh, the realm of the Department of Education here in New South Wales and the Hunter? Well, our Professor of Education, John Fischetti, who's uh, battled the rain himself to come in, will give us some insight. Good morning, mate. And um, do you foresee, I know we're still in a bit of an interim period, but do you foresee a lot of big changes as this new thing will roll out? Hey, Mark, good morning. It's great to see you on a beautiful Wednesday in the Newcastle area. So the government, as it starts into business, has not yet formally announced who the minister would be. So that Mm. makes this an easier conversation because it's not going to be personal. It's really about what the major issues they face are. And coming from the last government, there's some things that are left unattended that aren't necessarily low-hanging fruit, but I think they'll be at the top of the list of what they need to deal with. The first is this notion of teacher working conditions, and working conditions that teachers face in New South Wales are different than they were when the last government started in power. Just the tragedy of the news events in the last week around schooling, one in Queensland and one right here in Maitland that I know our listeners Mm -hmm. know about, Really bad things are happening in schools, not every day and not every minute, but unfortunately the tide has turned where a number of kids are coming to school, they're bringing the baggage of the situation that they have at home or in the community to school, leaving schools as the keeper of discipline in a very U.S. kind of definition of that, more rowdiness, more misbehavior, more trauma, more issues for teachers to have to manage. That working edition also involves teachers in the early years, including as well as kindergarten, who are having to do assessments on top of assessments with five years old. Very over-regulated, over-assessed. We're not letting teachers teach as some other places do. That's the biggest issue that has to be solved, Mark. Well, this is the, this is a big thing, isn't it, John? Because like you said, if, if there is indeed more of these outside uh, scenarios impacting on classrooms and schools, but on the same token, we're seeing, you know, real data of, of, of uh, results, you know, not where we would like them to be in, in some cases. Um, where's the who, where do we move here? Because more of an emphasis on teaching, less of the other stuff. But but if there's a whole lot of social problems coming in as well, yep. And those will continue to grow as the economy is threatening working people. That all of our listeners would know. Just interest rates on mortgages and on car loans and everything that have changed. The second big issue is around salary, and I think the new government will try to tweak that a bit, give a little bit more, and maybe that get that resolved. They're not that far off from international norms, but they are below where we were about 10 years ago. So you would hope that New South Wales would be in the upper half of teacher salaries in the world. Probably not so much now. They used to be. I think that's easily solved without a huge budget uh, challenge. The other is the supply of teachers and the new teachers that come to universities like this down all around the country because the image of teaching, ironically or paradoxically or sadly, because of what came out of COVID where everybody loved nurses and teachers, now all of a sudden we don't have enough of them. We're going to have to gain that mojo back and make it the make it a really aspirational thing to do. And that's with much more positive vibe about the great opportunity, but also the amazing love that teachers bring every day to what they do as well as the skills. Well, I would say that to a certain extent that's up to those in that sector and you're you're a slice of it to sell that um, because no matter what the product is, and in this case it is teachers, um, you have to sell how great that is. About 12 or 15 years ago, every second person I knew yeah. that was um, at leaving high school or in that sort of up to 25, they were all going into primary school teaching or I'm leaving the job I'm doing to go and do that. Um, that's obviously changed to a certain extent. And when, if you look at the last couple of years where there's been so many, um, and some of those, resist- there've been so many restrictions on what you can do. And uh, well, we, if you don't have, for example, if the next COVID comes along, you can't go back to work without being vaccinated. And I know in the medical sense, that's still the case. So uh, people are looking at a lot of these things. And like you said, the social challenges as well and going, is that really where I want to park my you know, next 40 years of work life? And well, in some cases, eh. The good news is that some folks that might have been standing doing PCR testing the last couple of years and have a biology degree might be interested in teaching biology. <laughs> they might be. And, and they do it inside yeah. instead of outside. So I think there's so much reason mm. to think that teaching's great. To me, the biggest challenge is to not let this be a polarizing thing, educating our children, where it becomes political. Is it liberal? Is it labor? Are you left? Are you right? And all this stuff. The, the real metaphor I like to use in terms of particularly the reading wars that are out there, do you believe in 
phenomic awareness, which is teaching reading very specifically, or do you leave more invention and all these things which become political markets? I haven't met your child yet. I haven't met your niece yet. And in that sense, if we could relax and a new minister could allow us to say, well, what in the toolkit do teachers need? And they need the whole range. Some kids learn very specifically. Others need it a little more broadly. Some need it in blue. Some need it bigger. Let's just give teachers all of the arsenal in their toolkit so they can teach every child so it doesn't become a political weapon. The weaponizing of the curriculum is what's happened in the U.S. and the U.K. and is happening here, where if you're for a certain approach, well, that's not the only approach. That might work for some kids. It's not going to work for all. So I would hope the tone would be the biggest change, where we're really about all kids being great, having great lives. They learn differently and not get into this, are you with me or are you against me? Let's give it all. Let's have everybody an expert in all of the approaches that might work. That could be the ticket. And I'm hoping our new minister, whoever she or he might be, will bring that new, fresh attitude because the previous regime was pretty much certain they were right. And I think they were right in a narrow bandwidth. Maybe we can get to another generation where we think about kids first, not the politics. Super quick before I let you go on that, John, is there too much stuff maybe in um, school curriculums that is does not really pertain to the subject at hand? And there's so much, it has become a lot of political, a lot of rewriting of history, a lot of all this sort of stuff that's in there. And you think, I'm just here teaching maths and numbers. What what does any of that stuff have to do? So if you've got to jam all of that in, again, you, um, and the political argument will be what it is. But from a person who has to do that on a, a day-to-day, you think, that's, that's too much for me. No, thanks. So the New South Wales Curriculum Review, which took place over the last three or four years, is tempted to pull some of that extra piece out back down on that pressure to just cover stuff and give teachers a little more flexibility. It went part of the way there. Some of it is to really recognize, and this is at the year 12 level, the ATAR, which was the gold standard, the HSC and ATAR is now one pathway uh, for students. In fact, a majority of people who will come to TAFER Uni this coming year will not choose that pathway. By doing so, if you free up assessment from having to be the way it was, teachers can get the power to teach as opposed to cover material. And that could be the best blessing that comes in the next few years is the chance if we allow teachers to focus where the learning needs to happen with the kids they have, well, we'll be on to something here and can continue. New South Wales is one of the best education systems in the world. Remember, we already have the best kids in the world. They're the only ones we got, so we have to say that, right? <laughs> no, and if we look at True. their performance, yeah. they're going great. The most qualified teachers, most qualified principals. So we got this. It's just really a matter now of empowering those teachers to let them teach. There's been a lot taken away from them. What I think you're suggesting is the right direction. Let's let mm. our teachers teach. All right. Well, uh, you told me before we come on you could fix it in about a week, so we'll see how long it takes those that actually have to do it. John Vachetti, as always, a pleasure. Well, you can get back out to the rain now. You said it was a beautiful day. And, oh, there's a bit of sunshine. That's right. So here you go, a bit of sunshine. I brought you some sunshine, Mark. All right, mate. Appreciate you. Have a great week. Thank Our you. Uh, professor of education out of the University of Newcastle speculating with crystal balling what the next little bit might look like in that world of education on 2 and URFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.